Greetings and welcome to a tutorial that is going to look at the immune system and at two things that are going to help coordinate the activity between the third line of defense. So there are some cellular signals that are used to tell the T cells and the B cells what to do and what cells need to be eliminated from the body. So we're going to jump in with some introductory information and a little bit of a whiteboard lecture. Okay, greetings. Um, we're gonna start talking about antigen presenting cells and how they signal specific cells to coordinate activity with the immune system. To understand the terms that I'll be using shortly, you should have an idea of what an antigen presenting cell is. Antigen presenting cells include B cells, they include dendritic cells, macrophages, reticular cells, and these are cells that have the ability to take in a foreign particle and digest it up and then display a piece of the antigen or piece of that former cell that was destroyed onto the surface of its cell. So the antigen presenting cell digests foreign molecules, foreign cells, foreign particles, and takes a piece of that particle and embeds it into its surface so that it can signal other cells with a specific type of response. We're gonna talk about MHCs. We're gonna look at type one and type two. MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex. And these are proteins that are produced by antigen presenting cells. And the major histocompatibility complex is coded on chromosome six, goes through the processes of transcription and translation to create these proteins which are then combined with the antigens. So what the antigen presenting cell does is it digests a foreign cell and creates small antigen fragments from that invading cell. It combines it with a major histocompatibility protein and plugs it into the surface. So if we we're looking at a picture of a cell, we would find that an antigen presenting cell would be taking information, taking an antigen. And so let's say that we have this little red bacteria, and this is my antigen presenting cell. And the antigen, antigen presenting cell is gonna digest this red bacteria. So it's going to send out processes from the cell to grab this. Eventually it's going to completely wrap around this foreign molecule, and it's gonna bring it inside the cell in a vesicle. And that vesicle is ideally gonna prevent that cell from causing damage to the host cell. My host cell is in black. And then it's going to use digestive enzymes that will be present in another vesicle it's going to combine these two vesicles. And then if we follow the progression, so we endocytose, we digest, and then we're going to have a vesicle that's going to have remnants of the cell that was digested. These remnants of the cells are my antigens, and these antigens then will be plugged into the surface of the cell. And depending upon what marker they're plugged in on, it's gonna tell or send two different messages to other cells. And there are gonna be a number of T cells in the immune system that will be going around and looking for these MHC markers and the antigens on their surface and responding to what the cell is signaling. So some antigen presenting cells, once they've produced their antigens, are going to combine those antigens with a vesicle that is going to have MHC markers in it. So I'm gonna draw a separate cell over here, okay? This cell was my digesting the antigen cell. This cell has already digested the 
antigen. And so we're going to have the vesicle in here with my antigens. And this cell also will have other vesicles that will have these hot dog bun shaped structures in them. And these hot dog shaped structures are the proteins that are the MHC2s in this example. So these are proteins that have been produced by the cell. Now, if you don't remember how proteins are produced by the cell, you've got the nucleus that's inside the cell. The nucleus is gonna send out a messenger RNA. The ribosomes are gonna use that messenger RNA to go through the process of translation and to create a protein. Those proteins are gonna be sent to the Golgi apparatus packaged up in vesicles and left inside the cell so that they're ready to use when the antigen presenting cell does digest a fragment. So once I have the antigen fragments and I have my pre-made MHC molecules, they're going to be combined together into one large vesicle. Now this takes place because the vesicles are a lipid-based membrane and so is the vesicle of the digested antigens and so they simply fuse together so that the MHC molecules are in the same space as the antigens. And one tip of the MHC gets to nestle that antigen so we have, well, they almost kind of look like little people here. So I have my antigen from the cell that was digested attached to an MHC. And that MHC marker then is moved to the membrane and then embedded in the membrane. And so I have my MHC2s, they're embedded in the membrane and on the surface are these foreign antigens. And these foreign antigens on an MHC molecule will signal a specific type of response. Now, there are two types of MHC molecules. One is an MHC1 and the other one is MHC2. MHC1s, their goal is to signal other cells that they are infected and require removal. So this molecule essentially signals to outside cells, kill me. It's the, I've caught the bad guy, I'm sick, I'm going down, save yourselves and kill me so that whatever's inside of me can't be spread to neighboring cells. The MHC2 sends a different signal. This signal says, or is equivalent to a wanted poster. It says, here is the bad guy. Go get it. So cells can signal either their own demise or can alert other cells to pathogens by using different MHC molecules. If a cell presents with an MHC1 molecule, it's going to signal death for itself. If a cell presents with an MHC2 molecule, it's going to coordinate the behavior of other T cells to go out, find the enemy, and eliminate the enemy from the body. How does that work? Well, let's look at something else here. Okay, we have two signals that a cell can send. If a cell has an MHC1 signal, this means that some organism, and it's probably not an organism, it could be, there are some cellular organisms that invade other cells, but most likely this is going to be a viral infected cell. So if I get this little virus, and this virus attaches to the cell and injects itself on the inside of the cell, that cell is going to be used to produce more viral particles. Now this cell 
while it's producing viral particles, can also create an MHC1 molecule. And that MHC1 molecule will be bound to some of the protein that is the viral protein that's being made inside the cell. So the cell, it's almost kind of sneaky here. While it's being forced to make viral proteins, it's also using a few ribosomes to produce some MHC1 histocompatibility markers. And it's taking a few pieces of the virus and it's loading it onto an MHC1. And then that MHC1, that cell sneaks that MHC1 out to the surface. All the time on the inside here, this cell is producing more and more and more virus. And it is a liability to the greater community of cells that it lives in. Because if the virus particles are released from this cell, they can infect neighboring cells that are healthy cells. So these cells are healthy. This one is sick. But if the virus is allowed to go unchecked, it could spread, spread virus to this cell and to this cell as well. So by signaling with the MHC1 molecule, anytime that a helper T cell comes along or a cytotoxic T cell comes along and they interact with this antigen, this cell is going to signal that it has an infection. And it's going to use something called an interleukin. It's a little chemical signal. So when this cell, this immune system cell, comes up here, oftentimes it's a T cell. When an immune system cell comes up here and sees this foreign antigen on the MHC1, the interleukin chemicals are shared, and this cell is screaming out, kill me. And that kill me signal is designed to, to cause the immune system cell to release, release cytokines to destroy the cell that's infected. So this will be very useful because if we can eliminate this cell and the viral particles on the inside, these cells can remain healthy. So an MHC1 signal is used to signal that a cell needs to be removed from the body. The MHC2, which is largely used by macrophages, is going to send out a very different signal. So as we looked at a little earlier, we're going to have a cell, and oftentimes, as I've mentioned, it is the macrophage. And the macrophage is going to go through the process of phagocytosis, and it's going to create the vesicle of digested foreign pathogen antigens. And there's also going to be a vesicle that will be loaded with plenty of MHC2s. These have been pre-made because this cell, the macrophage, knows that it's going to be presenting antigens. It, one of its jobs, one of its tasks, is to alert other cells in the body to foreign invaders. So these two vesicles combine and we get the MHC2s that are going to hold on to pieces of the antigen. And those are going to be moved into the surface of the cell. And they're going to be put on display. Now again, immune system cells, and most often this one is the not only a T cell, but it's a helper T cell is going to come along and it's going to also grab and touch this antigen. The macrophage and the immune system cell are going to spread more signals back and forth. They can't really talk to each other like we have language, but they can use chemicals to signal. And interleukins, so everything that you're seeing up here in brown is an interleukin. And it's a cell signal. It's a chemical that's being transferred between these cells. Now, this immune system cell, when it bumps into this foreign antigen on an MHC2 molecule, is going to then become activated 
to search out the bad guy, the bad cell, and to go get it. Now, oftentimes, uh, textbooks will talk about MHC2 molecules being like a rally around the flag, like the quarterback in the football game who coordinates the activity, calls the plays, and then all the players go out and elicit whatever the plan is for that particular play. So an MHC2 is kind of like a wanted poster or a flag that says, this is what the bad guy looks like. Please go out and attack that bad guy. The MHC1 is going to say, I'm infected. I'm the one that has the disease, so please eliminate me so that I don't spread the disease. This cell is almost acting altruistically in an attempt to save its peers. It's sacrificing itself. So those are the two major, major histocompatibility molecules that we need to discuss. They both signal very different responses to cells. One is going to say, I am damaged, please take me out. And the other one's going to say, this is the bad guy, go and get it. So this macrophage with this MHC2 and antigen on its surface is not saying to this immune system cell, I have caught the disease. It's saying, look what I found. We should go out and find more of these and eliminate them. So this is one of the ways that the body is looking for not self antigens and causing two different responses, either a kill me response or a go get this bad guy response. So major histocompatibilities are the primary signalers to, to cause different effects by the immune system. Thank you for joining me.